All right, welcome back, boys and girls. This is part two of the math video for today, the 19th of October, uh, finishing up our chapter review test, uh, starting with question number nine, found on the third page, or fourth page, actually, of the uh, review test. So let's look, go ahead and get out your math books. Make sure they have already been finished uh, from the from earlier. Hopefully you did them in class already. Now we can just go over the answers. So please have them out. All right, so we read here at the top. It says a toy store sells seven different model cars. And so it was little tiny cars. And so each model comes in five different colors. So how many different model cars are there? There's a number of ways that we can approach this. We see, of course, that we have two important pieces of information, seven different models and five different colors, okay? We can always, if we need to do a model, we can always do our array multiplication if we need to do that. So we have here, we have our seven cars, one car, two cars, three, four, five, six, seven, and each one in five colors. So maybe this one's red, then we have green, black, white, and just for fun of it, they'll say hot pink. There we go, that'll be fun. All right, so we'll do the quick array model because I don't want to put in all of those stars. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we know just to multiply seven times five which is 35, right? So here we have solved the problem. So we know that there are 35 different model cars. So that's good information to have. So now we have to choose a type of problem that we would use. So this type is an array, right? This, we decided that's probably the easiest way to do that. So we, it's an array and we know that this operation is multiplication. We know it's multiplication because we don't know the total number of groups. We only know that there are seven groups of five, right? Seven different models of cars in five different colors. So that's how we um, are able to do that. Now, so when it asks us to write another problem that is the same type, it's asking them to be an array and multiplication, okay? So you don't wanna do an area model and division because that wouldn't um, meet the requirement. So Maybe, um, again, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but uh, let's say a Jack has seven different types of Pokemon cards and eat and Oh, we'll even do different numbers. We'll do uh, four, four different types of Pokemon cards and has eight of eight different cards of each type. How many different cards does he have? So the key is, is you're going for the array, okay? If you're not giving the full answer, right? You're not going for the 35. We have one group and a second group. Got it? Okay. So I can't wait to see some of, the, of these. This right here is one of your secret questions that you're going to, to write on the comment section to so make sure you uh, do this. There actually will be another one. So don't go do it yet. There's two different problems that you're gonna want to put into the comment. All right. Now, here we have, write a question for the given information, then write an equation and solve. So we read, a museum has 297 visitors on Friday. It has 468 visitors on Saturday. Do we really know uh, what they're asking? No, that's what you get to do. <coughs> so you can decide, do you want it to be addition or subtraction? You can go either way. I could say, um, it had 297 visitors on Friday, 468 visitors on Saturday. How many more visitors came on Saturday than on Friday, right? And that would be what kind of problem? That'd be a subtraction problem. 
I could say the museum had 297 visitors on Friday, 468 visitors on Saturday. How many people visited the museum in all? And that would be a plus, right? That'd be an addition problem. So if you were to write it as a subtraction, let me change colors here, then you would, then it would obviously be 468 minus 297 equals the answer, right? And you'd have to subtract that and find that out. If you're doing the addition, then you would have to, same idea, except this time you're going to add it, right? So it would be 468 plus 297 equals x. You could do that for the 468 as well, okay? Use it as x. So here is your equation. And then obviously you would then solve it. Uh, x equals the answer, right? So 675 or 171, okay? So either one of those would work. All right, so save that picture. We're putting those in, we're taking a picture of the screen and putting it in our assignment as well. So you can look at that also. So now let's uh, scroll down to page, what is this, page 163. Here we're gonna be working with patterns. So how can you use a pattern to help you find six times nine if you know three times nine? So if you already know three times nine, you have your threes memorized, they're solid. Okay, three, so you know that. Complete this part of the multiplication table to help you explain. So first thing you're gonna do is fill this out. Three times, one times three is three, six, nine, eight, or is it 12? Sorry, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, right? So there we go. Second row, we have our sixes. So we're gonna walk through that also, right? So six times one is six, 12, 18, 24, 30, getting really bad, 36, I know yours is neater than this, I hope. 42, 48, and nine times six is 54. So when you're looking at this problem on your math test, it's not gonna be three and nine and six and nine, but it's gonna be a very similar type of thing. So if you notice, look at the relationship between the first line and the second line. You should notice that the top number, the first one is twice, or is it one half of the one on the bottom? The one on the bottom is two times that. So if you knew your three times nine, you know that all you would need to find um, the other one would be to double it, right? If I knew my threes and I knew that three times four was 12, then I knew that three times, or four times six is 24, okay? So you just double that number. So you need to write something um, similar to that. So key parts of your answer is by using using what you know, you can multiply three times nine, which equals what twenty seven, and by noticing that the sixes are twice threes, I would double 27 to equal 54, something like that, kind of like we talked about in class. Okay, so you can give an answer similar to that. Okay, so that's the direction you're going, that's what you want. All right. Know it's going quick, but also know um, not a lot of time. So here we go. So we select the answers that show square numbers. What's a square number? The number that's multiplied by itself, right? 
one times one, two times two, five times five, two million times two million. Those are all square numbers. So when I look at these, I'm trying to find the ones that are squared. How many answers can I have? I could have up to six. There's six, six choices, right? So we wanna make sure um, you look at each one carefully. Some of you on the last test, you checked one, even though there's multiple questions. It says mark all that apply, it's super important, which means more than one answer, okay? So two times five, is that square? Nope, definitely not. Four times four? Yes, that is squared. So we're gonna choose B. Eight times eight? That is two also, yes. How about six times six? Yes, it's the same number of times itself, right? Eight times four? Eh, no. And five times five? Yes, it is, okay? So draw a picture for one of the equations that you chose. All right, so it's like, ooh, this is so hard. This one's easy, don't make it hard, okay? Literally, all you need to do, draw a square. Super easy, first step, right? We all can do that. It doesn't have to be a perfect square, but it needs to be a square. Choose one of these, which one do you wanna choose? Let's do six times six, right? So I put a six here, I put a six over here, and um, so now I have my model. Here's my picture. Am I finished? No, I'm not. And so if you leave it like this on your test, you're not gonna get full credit. So please do not leave it like this. It's not the right way. I have to no say that it's a square number because both sides are equal square numbers. Let's see if I better make that go up, huh? Square numbers are numbers multiplied by what? By themselves. Okay, so that's the super important part. So square numbers are numbers that are multiplied by themselves. Got it? Okay. All right, almost there, coming in final page. Oh, I have to clear the screen. That looks kind of weird, huh? Okay. Read the problem and then write the first step, question and answer, then write the equation to solve the question. Okay, so a school buys games for six classrooms. It buys three board games, four puzzle games, and one video game for each classroom. How many games does the school buy? Okay, so they kind of trick you here because the first piece of information is not really the first question. Okay, so most people are like, ooh, I see a six, I'm gonna write a six. Don't do it that way. Make sure you understand the question. So you have the three board games, four puzzle games, and one video game for each classroom. That really is the question. The question is how, the first question is how many games for each class? Okay, so that's super important. So eat. You have to know that that's the first question. So then we add them up. Now, remembering PEMDAS, that's how I'm gonna tell a person seeing my equation what to do first, right? Eventually, I'm gonna multiply by six, but I can't do that first. First, I'm gonna do parentheses, three board games, plus four puzzle games, plus one video game. Right, this is what each class gets times total number of classes, which is six equals G for games. So what is three plus four plus one? Eight, right? So it now turns to eight times six equals 48, right? So X or G equals 48 games. So. 48 games, all right? All right, almost there, hang in there. We can do this, okay? So we have draw a line to match each expression on the left with an expression on the right that has the same value. So I look here and I look here. So I have to find ones that have the same answer. So first, seven times four is 28 plus one zero is 280. In fact, I would probably recommend you just do the math for each one, right? So here's. 
four times seven is 28 plus zero, so it's 280, horrible writing. Two times four times four, so it's four times four, 16 times two, thir 32. Seven times seven is 49. We have to be careful here, two plus two times four, remember PEMDAS, two times four is first, that's eight plus two is 10, right? Five times three times two, so 15 times two is 30. And PIM does divide comes before addition. So eight divided by four is two plus two is four. Over here, we have five times six is 30. Here we have seven times five plus seven times two. So seven times five is 35 plus seven times two is 14. That equals what? 49, okay. Two plus two is four. Hopefully you knew that one. Two, 28 times 10 is 280. Eight times four is 32. And two plus eight is 10, right? That's the first step. Get that out of the way. Trust me, it's a lot easier if you just do it that way, all right? Now we can go draw them. Now, when you draw them, you don't have to use a ruler, but you do need to make sure that it's super clear, okay? So we find 280 and we match it. Here we go, 280, 280. Here we have 32, where's 32? Oh, down there. 49, where's 49? Oh, it's right here. 10 goes to 10. 30 goes to 30. And finally, four goes to four, okay? So, Pretty straightforward. You just have to uh, basically do each of those problems by itself. A whole lot easier than trying to match them up. Trust me. All right. So then choose the equation that makes the statement true. So we know that which one of these is true so that we know that this is true. So we have to look at each one. Is 3 times 9, 27? Yes. 3 times 5 is 15. 8 times 6 is 48. 4 times 7 is 28. Hmm. So we have to find its reciprocal question over here. 24 divided by three is eight. Do we have that over here? No. How about 18 divided by nine is two? We don't have that one. 36 divided by six? No. How about 48 divided by eight? Oh, we do. So here, see, see here is our reciprocal numbers here and here. You can't just mark one and then try to find it. You have to do them simultaneously. So you're looking for inverse operations. Here is multiplication, here is division. Okay, let me save that. And that actually concludes, if you can believe it, we survived the, the math practice test. Nothing too hard, to be honest. Um, go slow, one problem at a time, and you will be fine. All right, so good luck. Uh, tomorrow we will do some more practice with Think Central, and then we'll be taking our test on, on a Wednesday. So best of luck with that. I know you guys will do awesome. All right, so if you're in Mr. Morrison's class, please make sure that you go to um, Spanish, Mrs. Johnson's class, make sure you go to computers. And I did forget um, the, se the second uh, question that you're going to put into the comment section. So let's look at that real quick is right here. So make sure you do the, what your answer is down here for question, the second question you're going to be putting into the comments. So number 13. Can't wait to see those and uh, we will uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.